Uh, good evening. Welcome to AC Transit's Transit Talks. My name is Claudia Burgos, Director of Legislative Affairs and Community Relations at AC Transit. Transit Talks, Transit Talks is an opportunity for AC Transit's leadership team to share community updates on bus service, who we serve, and our plans for the future as we all navigate our way out of this pandemic. Our agenda for this evening is simple. We will hear opening remarks from members of the AC Transit Board of Directors. We will then move into a presentation of approximately 45 minutes, which will be delivered by key members of the AC Transit team, including AC Transit General Manager, Michael Hirsch. We will have three live polls throughout the evening to help us understand how you are thinking about your future travels to and from work, school, and other activities. Uh, let's see, with that, we're gonna get the program started. Next, I'm gonna introduce the two board directors that are with us this evening, uh, Board President Elsa Ortiz and uh, Director Jean Walsh. First, I'm gonna start with uh, President Ortiz, and then I'll inter introduce Director Walsh, after which I will turn the mic over to each of them. Elsa Ortiz was elected in November of 2006, and she is serving her fourth term on the AC Transit Board of Directors, representing the entire city of Alameda, as well as portions of both the cities of Oakland and San Leandro. Uh, president Ortiz is currently uh, serving her third term as president of the board. Also with us this evening is Director Jean Walsh. Director Walsh is serving her first term, having been elected to the AC Transit Board of Directors in November 2020 to represent Ward 2. Ward 2 covers the cities in Northern Alameda County, Emeryville, Piedmont, Berkeley, and the Northern part of Oakland. I would like to welcome board member Jean Walsh, Walsh to share opening remarks. Um, but first, uh, let's see, first I'm gonna turn the mic over to President Ortiz. Okay, thank you, Claudia. Uh, good evening, and thank you for taking the time to join us. As you heard, my name is Elsa Ortiz. I'm the president of the AC Transit Board of Directors. My colleague, the Director Walsh, and I, along with five other directors, are elected to the board by the communities we serve, representing five wards and two large seats to govern AC Transit, a special district in the Bay Area. We meet twice a month on the second and the fourth Wednesday at 5 p.m. However, we are currently holding these meetings via Zoom. These meetings are open to the public. This has been a difficult year for us at AC Transit. The pandemic has impacted revenue and ridership at level, a level never previously seen. As a board member, I've spent the last year advocating for funding at the federal and state levels and for vaccine prioritization for our employees. I am hopeful about the new administration commitment to ensurance we have long-term sustainable funding in place to support public transit nationwide. Long-term sustainable funding to support operations is what we need to restore service to previous levels, and that will continue being one of my priorities. My hope is that you will find this evening meeting informative and that you will, all, you, will, it, you will be able to share your questions and comments with us. In this time that has been difficult for so many, I thank you for joining me and my colleagues at AC Transit to learn what's happening as we attempt to recover from the pandemic and navigate a path forward. Again, thank you. I will now turn it over to my fellow board member, Director Jean Walsh. Jean. Thank you, President Ortiz. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to join us on this beautiful Monday evening. I am Jean Walsh. I'm one of the newest AC Transit board members just elected last November 2020. And I, as it was mentioned, represent Ward 2, which is uh, a lot of Oakland, uh, some of Berkeley, and all of Piedmont and Emeryville. Uh, so why did I run to be on the board of directors of AC Transit? I believe the bus should be fast, frequent, reliable, pleasant, affordable, and easy to use. And I'm a big fan of transit. I'm also a big critic of critic of transit. I, I ride it myself. I haven't had a car for over 15 years. And so I'm a big booster and you'll always hear me trying to get more folks on the bus. And I'm also a, a, a big critic. I feel like it should be better. And so that's what I wanted to do as a board member is to try to make transit better. I, I believe that uh, we need to make the bus better for our most vulnerable community members who rely on it and don't have any other option. Our seniors, our people with disabilities, our students, 
uh, our essential workers, low income folks, and we really need to make the bus better and more competitive so that we can get people out of their cars and onto the bus. We're in a climate emergency and getting us out of our cars and onto transit in more sustainable modes is really critical for our future. I believe that good public transit, uh, it really means economic opportunity, cleaner air, healthier communities and a better world. And that's what I'm fighting for. So I am really grateful for everyone's participation tonight. My hope is that you will find this evening's meeting informative and that you'll have plenty of time to answer, your, ask your questions and let us know what's on your mind. And I thank you for joining us. And uh, I will now turn it over to AC Transit's general manager, Michael Hirsch for an AC Transit overview. Thank you, Director Walsh uh, and President Ortiz. Uh, thank you for your remarks. Good evening, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here with you, and I'm thrilled that you all are taking your Monday evening to be with us. My name is Mike Hirsch. I'm the general manager at AC Transit. I've been here a little over five and a half years. Um, I, I first want to shout out to our frontline workers, uh, the men and women of AC Transit who are driving the bus, our mechanics, uh, cleaning staff, janitorial staff that truly are heroes and essential frontline workers. You'll see in my presentation tonight that uh, comparatively, we've had a uh, high ridership to other systems in the Bay Area. And, and, and that's an indicator of just how essential our service has been during the pandemic. I know these have been difficult times. I can't wait to get our service restored and our ridership back. Uh, we've had to make difficult choices, but I really wanna recognize those frontline workers and thank them for their dedication. Uh, they truly are making a difference in our community. Um, Again, thank you for joining us tonight and for your continued support as we work to restore and rebuild service in the 13 cities and eight unincorporated areas of Alameda and Contra Costa counties. We pride ourselves as being the third largest public bus system in California and third largest transit agency in the San Francisco Bay Area. You'll see that during the pandemic, we actually had the second highest ridership in the Bay Area, as I mentioned. Our service is critical to the regional economy our Transbay service across the Bay Bridge, San Mateo Bridge, Dumbarton Bridge had surpassed 15,000 average daily rides before the pandemic and was the service that had consistently shown year over year growth. We were getting 30,000 students to school daily, whether you're a rider, a business owner, an elected official, and even if you drive, I guarantee you that anything that impacts AC Transit in one way or the other impacts you too. Prior to March of 2020, we carried approximately 189,000 weekday riders and more than 53 million riders annually. As of last week, our ridership is still down 60% compared to pre-pandemic levels. Our Transbay ridership has been severely impacted due to people working from home and not commuting. But the pandemic will not last forever and when the economy re reopens, we will continue playing a critical role in the Bay Area's transportation network. We connect with 16 other public and private bus systems, 25 bar, six Amtrak stations, and four ferry terminals. And when Alameda's Seaplane Lagoon Ferry Terminal opens, we'll connect to that ferry terminal as well. While our overall ridership today is a fraction of what it was before the pandemic, we continue providing a critical service, in particular for those that have continued to ride during the pandemic. We've always been a lifeline for many, and our service has always been a critical component of the fabric of many communities. Ensuring the sustainability of AC transit service is truly a matter of equity. Given that 65% of our riders are low income and 75% are people of color, a rider survey conducted during the pandemic revealed that those still riding are dependent on our service. 40% were making essential trips, trips to work, school, medical appointments, to get groceries, et cetera. 15% identified as essential workers. 43% indicated they don't have access to a car. Today, AC Transit ridership is the second highest of any barrier transit agency carrying more riders than BART on average weekday and second only to SFMTA or Muni. During the pandemic, AC Transit staff has been hard at work every day getting service on the road. As I mentioned, our frontline employees, the bus operators, mechanics, road supervisors have come to work every day, getting essential workers where they need to go. 
Behind the scenes, AC Transit staff has been busy all year long in a variety of key projects. Amazing during the pandemic, we were able to open our tempo, our bus rapid transit service. The first in the East Bay was launched in August of 2020, as I say, in the middle of the pandemic. Tempo runs along a 9.5 mile route through the cities of Oakland and San Leandro. With 10 minute headways and buses traveling 80% of the route in a dedicated bus only lane, we are seeing on time performance levels of 84%. No other line in the system uh, achieves that level of on time performance. We've also added innovative technology to assist our riders. Our IT and marketing communications departments have been focused on developing technologies aimed at improving the rider experience. This year, we launched our first ever official mobile app that offers real-time information. Where's your bus? When's it gonna be there? A new contactless fare payment option using your phone and access to AC Transit's customer service center. Additionally, we launched a new rider capacity feature, which offers riders real-time information about bus capacity levels. So important during the pandemic with social distancing. We launched a new website earlier this year and completed a full renovation of our customer service center in downtown Oakland, which is now open to the public. In March, AC Transit was named Employer of the Year by the San Francisco Bay Area Chapter of the Women's Transportation Seminar, WTS, in recognition of our commitment to the advancement of women in the transportation industry. In January, AC Transit joined the Clipper Start Program, a pilot program offering a 20% discount to eligible low-income riders. On March 1st, we launched an all-door boarding pilot on two lines, the 6 and 51B, to help speed up boarding by allowing riders paying with Clipper to board and tag their, tag their Clipper card at the rear door, therefore speeding up boarding processes and improving reliability. In 2020, we introduced battery electric buses to our fleet, adding to our current zero emission fleet of hydrogen fuel cell buses. And when federal and state officials announced they would establish a max vaccination site at the Oakland Coliseum, we answered the call by providing free shuttle service, getting over 3,800 residents to their vaccine appointment. Despite the challenges of the pandemic, we've remained committed to advancing projects to improve the rider experience and better serve our customers. We are already seeing evidence of change that is forcing all of us to plan and operate differently and at AC Transit, we're doing just that, adjusting, innovating, and doing our best to respond to the needs of riders as travel patterns continue evolving. Staff has prepared a couple of live polls tonight to receive instant feedback that will help our planners in their efforts to build a bus network that is responsive to the needs of our community. In fact, we have our first live poll right now. Can we get the first poll up on the screen? For those listening, the question is, how will you travel once you return to work, school, or other activities? And the choices are drive alone, carpool, ride public transit, bike, walk, take Uber or Lyft, transportation network companies, TNCs, or mix it up. And we'll wait a minute here to see the results. Uh, interesting, mix it up at 48%. Followed closely, and we like to see this public transit at 39%. Uh, drive alone, just one responded at 4%. Nobody's carpooling. Nobody's taking Uber and Lyft. Bike, two respondents for 9% of the poll. Zero respondents for walking. Again, mix it up at 48%, and public transit at 39%. Uh, very interesting results. I appreciate everyone for participating in that first live poll. I will now turn the mic over to AC Transit's Acting Director of Marketing and Communication, Nichelle Lanes, who will speak about AC Transit's commitment to health and safety. Again, thank you. I'm proud to be here with you. Thank you, General Manager Hirsch. Good evening, Nichelle Lanes, Acting Director of Marketing and Communications. And I'm pleased to speak with you about the safety measures AC, AC Transit has in place to continue to provide you with a safe ride. In accordance with state and county mandates, AC Transit has taken a proactive approach to ensure safety and wellness measures for riders and operators. I want to emphasize that and remind everyone that AC Transit since the beginning of the pandemic has 
and continues to require face coverings while riding our buses. To aid in this requirement, mask and hand sanitizer personal protective equipment, PPEs, are available on every bus for our riders. Signage on every bus reminds riders to maintain a six feet social distance and to wear face coverings correctly. Our buses are cleaned and fogged each day with a disinfectant. All operators currently use the positive airflow ventilation procedure implemented during the COVID-19 pandemic. This procedure requires all windows to be closed, the heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, or HVAC on, and the rear roof hatch placed in the fully opened position. This pushes particulates through the roof hatch and refreshes onboard air 50 times an hour. Additionally, our maintenance department created a COVID shield for each bus. This latching shield encloses the operator for more protection from the spread of COVID-19. Finally, buses now have a COVID limit line on the floor near the operator to ensure a six foot distance between riders and operators. So one of the challenges of social distancing on buses is a significant reduction in the rider loads we can typically carry. We are limited to about 25% of our normal bus loads between 10 and 24 riders, depending on the type of bus. As AC Transit complies with the CDC guidance on rider capacity, when our rider capacity has been reached, we must make the difficult call of not onboarding additional riders. We realize that with fewer seats available to those um, because of these social distancing requirements, knowing the bus occupancy levels as you plan your trip is a critical factor in successfully navigating our system in this unprecedented time and beyond. To that end, our innovation and technology team added a new feature to assist our riders with our real within our real-time bus arrival predictor. And the general manager mentioned this during his slides. The rider capacity feature enables riders to view real-time bus capacities by line. Additionally, once a bus has reached its capacity, our operators reach out to our operations control center or OCC to send out another bus to ease overcrowding. And now I'm going to turn it over to AC Transit's chief financial officer, Chris Andrichek, who will present on the topic, emergency funding for public transit. Thank you, Nichelle. This is Chris Andrichek. I'm the uh, Chief Financial Officer for AC Transit. I manage all aspects of the district's finances and ensure we have the funds we need to provide the essential service to the public in our service area. Tonight, I'll offer a high-level overview of AC Transit's financial conditions and how we're getting through the pandemic. First off, uh, the emergency federal funding we've received so far has been a lifeline. And to be clear, this funding has replaced the operating funds we lost during the pandemic as our ridership plummeted and other funding sources decreased. It has not been additional funding. It is emergency funding that has kept us afloat. AC Transit received 114 million from the initial pandemic CARES Act in the middle of last calendar year. We used $30 million to fill in the revenue losses in our last fiscal year and the remaining $84 million to fill in the revenue losses for this current fiscal year, 2020 through 2021. Looking at next fiscal year, we don't think the economy will back, be back to normal, nor do we think our regular revenues will have returned in full for the next fiscal year. We will be using the second federal aid package, known as the CARISA Act, to fill in the $56 million in revenue losses we project for this coming fiscal year. So again, the takeaway here is that we currently have been able to balance our budget to date thanks to the federal aid we have received. And also because we've reduced expenses and are currently just providing 75% of the service we would normally provide. So prior to the pandemic, AC Transit was in pretty good financial position. What has helped us in this pandemic is that AC Transit has a more diverse revenue source mix. 
A combination of sales taxes, property taxes, fare box revenues, bridge toll funds, it's different than many other agencies. All property owners in AC Transit service area pay $8 per month parcel tax to support our essential service. We're extremely grateful that voters have continued to support this stable measure through the years. Stable funding like this has helped keep our revenues from dropping as much as other agencies, particularly those that depend on fare box revenues more, such as BART, Caltrain, Golden Gate Transit, and San Francisco Muni. The chart on the right shows the different types of revenues that a selection of different agencies receive. It's not the easiest chart to read on Zoom, but the point is to show that we're all fronted from a different mix of revenues. And for the people who are calling in on the phone, there's a very colorful bar chart, uh, about nine different agencies on there, and it shows some of the, you know, the, the different revenue sources that they have, whether they have lots of sales taxes or lots of fare box revenues or uh, various things on the chart. So it's hard to predict what will happen with the economy and transit ridership looking forward. What we're experiencing is not a normal recession. However, based on prior recessions, we think it could take a couple years before employment levels reach what they were before the pandemic. And since March of last year, many jobs have been moved from the office and into our homes. We are hearing and expecting that work from home and outside the office or workplace will continue to some degree for those that can, which will mean reduced Transbay and local ridership. We are doing our best, but cannot control when people might return to transit, particularly if they have other transportation choices. So we are fortunate and grateful to have received two rounds of emergency federal aid to support our operations so far. This federal funding has been critical in stopping the bleeding, but it has not made us whole. President Biden recently signed the American Rescue Plan or ARP Act into law, which will provide a third round of federal aid. At this time, we don't know how much we will receive. However, the emergency federal aid will not continue forever. So we must plan for a service level that we can support with our regular revenues once the federal aid runs out. Next, we'll talk about how we plan for future service. But before we do that, we have another poll for you to participate in. So this poll is asking how many days per week will you be commuting? There's I will work or attend school from home, zero days, one day, two day, three days, four days, five or more days, and I don't know. And the results are, okay, it looks like Wow, five or more days is our winner with 36%. And then I don't know is a second with 32%. Then we have three days a week, 14%, four days at 9%, and two days and zero days at 5%. Nobody picked one day and nobody picked, I will tend, attend work or school from home. Now we'll uh, move on to Robert Del Rosario and Great. Thanks, Chris. Uh, as uh, Chris mentioned, my name is Robert Del Rosario. I'm the Director of Service Development and Planning for AC Transit, and I will discuss our current and future plans for service recovery and restoration. Slide. At the onset of the pandemic, um, over a year ago, can you imagine that, um, is when we started our shelter in place, we immediately reduced service to 65% service levels because of a significant drop in ridership, uh, down 74%. Uh, right at the start, we actually dropped 96% in uh, Transbay ridership. So virtually no one was riding our Transbay service. Um, and we also had concerns over the potential lack of available workforce, including bus operators. Fortunately, as Chris mentioned, due to federal funding, we were able to increase and sustain service levels at 75% uh, with ridership increasing to about 40% of pre-pandemic levels as, as the general manager mentioned earlier. The increase was to primarily bring our trunk and major corridor routes back up to pre-pandemic service levels where they stand today. We've also been able to make recent minor additions, particularly with the start of some supplementary school routes in response to the reopening of schools in the past uh, month and a half. In addition to the service increase, we are also started planning and analysis for full restoration and a new network. However, there are three categories um, to service recovery that we have to keep in mind as we plan this new network. Uh, one is available funds, two is available resources, particularly bus operators, 
And three is understanding of ridership patterns. Chris gave you a good update uh, on the budget and our financial situation. With regards to hiring and training operators, um, we have to uh, compete with other transit operators in the region to, to uh, hire operators. So there's going to be a, a huge amount of, uh, of demand and supply may not be able to match uh, the, the hiring needs that we have. On top of that, we do have, we still have CDC guidelines and Cal OSHA regulations to limit the number of operators we can, we can train once we hire them. And we are exploring creative solutions to increase the throughput of operators so that we can increase services as fast as possible. We'll need to collect customer travel data via outreach surveys and other data sources to really understand those travel patterns of our riders going forward. We're looking at all sorts of uh, data, whether it's traffic patterns, uh, cell phone data, um, other ways that we can get an idea of, of how people are traveling um, as we go into the recovery mode of pandemic and beyond. The goal is to implement a new service network that responds to the new normal by August of 2022. Along the way, we plan to engage in robust outreach to inform the planning effort, board approval process, as well as implementation. Now, I do wanna emphasize that the August 2022 target is for a new route network. We will be able to reactivate suspended service at any point before then as funding and resources allow. Um, and we're doing that, we're looking at some of those things already. We're looking to add uh, service in South County um, in June. Um, this is to, to bring back uh, some of the services that were suspended down there. Uh, we intend to bring back a vast majority of the school service in August if schools fully reopen, which it sounds like they will. And we hope to start some pilots uh, later this year. We're bringing to our board for consideration um, a pilot um, on, in the city of Alameda to serve the new uh, Seaplane Lagoon area. Um, we've heard a lot of concerns about service along the Ashby Corridor in Berkeley. Uh, we have a pilot consideration there. Um, and then going back even pre-pandemic, there were connections that we didn't make from Chabot to the South Hayward BART station. Uh, we're looking to see if we can, if we can address those uh, sometime in the near term also as a pilot. Next slide. So in terms of our existing network, um, you can see the slide here is uh, the lines in North and West Oakland. Um, I can share with you what's going on in these areas today. Um, you get a good idea that we've basically reactivated um, a number of the routes um, um, in this area. This is really the heart of AC Transit service area. If I can show the next slide. Um, here are all the routes in East Oakland. Um, again, we have, we, we actually started service. We started the Tempo BRT in the, in the fall of uh, last year. Um, so we brought back much of the service, particularly in this area, um, given how much it is uh, utilized and needed. Um, the one thing that we haven't um, uh, brought back and was shown in the previous slide is much of our peak hour um, trans-based service. Um, we are, I think, operating the NL along MacArthur, um, and then a few routes, uh, a few trips on the NX, NX1, NX2, um, really just getting engaged and seeing if people uh, will ride those services. Um, we also have yet to bring back the 46 and 47. We'll consider those as we uh, build our new, our new network plan. Um, those did have small uh, ridership amounts uh, prior to the pandemic. With regards to Transbay, um, I mentioned those routes that are running, but the other ones, we're going to strategize and see how we can bring that back. I think Chris had mentioned uh, well that we're not sure what that looks like, what the commute patterns look like to San Francisco and how people will be riding uh, riding the bus um, or whether or not they'll be working from home or some sort of combination of that. The poll that uh, the, the uh, viewers um, took is going to be very helpful information um, in helping us piece together what our Transbay network will look like. Um, but that is one of, the, one of the big question marks is what our ridership patterns leading to San Francisco uh, will be in the future. Next slide. Um, actually, we can go to the, the next slide. That would be great. So the same goes uh, holds true for uh, San Leandro. We brought back lots of the of the services, particularly those trunk routes. Um, there are some of the uh, crosstown routes that are returned, um, but not at uh, full frequency. And we are looking at when we can start uh, returning those as resources as well. Next slide. So onto the the, the timeline for this new network. Um, here's a more detailed overview of the plan. Uh, to reach that new network in August of 2022. The process will include multiple outreach points for information gathering, planned feedback and implementation with planned development in between. 
We initiated this process with the transit talks meeting series to inform public of our recovery status and plans and to seek public feedback. The first meeting uh, was held on April 26th and will continue over the next two weeks, including the meeting that we're having tonight. In the fall, we plan to conduct another round of more in-depth outreach to get an idea of travel patterns and customer needs. The information from our outreach will feed our planning process to develop that new route network. Once staff develops a draft new network proposal, we will set a public hearing for final public feedback and engagement and board approval in the spring of 2022. Um, if we have an approved plan by then, uh, we will then start the uh, public outreach to inform our riders and the public of the service changes scheduled for August of 2022. And this is all tentative, lots of things can change. As we all know, this is a very fluid time, um, but, but right now our goal is August, 2022 for a new network and service incremental service increases uh, along the way. So now this brings us to our third and final uh, poll question to really get some feedback as to what's important to the rider um, when we return service. So the question specifically is help AC Transit set its priorities for recovery. What actions should come first? So the first is improved service to disadvantaged communities. Second is improved service on major transit lines where ridership is highest. Third is increased service to cover as much of the service area as possible. And the last but not least is to restore transit service. So we'll pause there and uh, get your responses. All right, and here are our responses. Um, similar to our previous transit talk sessions, we did have a balance of responses. So uh, for, for this group, uh, the number one um, or top response is improved service on major transit lines where ridership is highest at 36%. Uh, 32% had increased service to cover as much of the service area as possible. Um, then 23% improves, uh, had improved service to disadvantaged communities. And the last at 9% was restored transit service. So thank you guys for uh, taking this uh, poll. This is very informative information and I will turn it back to General Manager Hirsch to continue with the presentation. Thanks so much, Robert. And good evening again, everyone. Uh, thank you for your attention. We will be starting the question and answer portion very shortly, but I'd like to share some project updates with you that are not related to the pandemic, but are important to our future operations. Since the year 2000, AC Transit has been building the most comprehensive zero emission bus, or ZEB, program in the United States, initially focused on hydrogen fuel cell technology, and most recently expanded to include battery electric buses making our zero emission program one of the most sophisticated programs in the country. Today, all of our zero emission buses are prioritized to serve our most disadvantaged communities, which are also the most impacted by environmental factors. We're currently running a side-by-side -side comparison of hydrogen fuel cell, battery electric, in addition to conventional diesel, diesel hybrid and our older legacy fuel cell buses. This study will offer detailed comparisons of each technology's performance, reliability, fuel efficiency, range, and capital operating costs. All transit agencies in California are required to operate a 100% zero emission bus fleet by the year 2040. And in many ways, we're ahead of the curve compared to other agencies in the state. However, our challenge will be securing the funding needed to upgrade our facilities and build the infrastructure needed to adequately accommodate a 100% zero emission fleet that's over 540 buses. We currently have several corridor projects underway, which are aimed at enhancing operations and improving service reliability on the Telegraph, Grand, West Grand, San Pablo, and Dunmartin corridors. These projects include installation of transit signal priority, or TSP. The equipment allows our buses to communicate with traffic signals for faster travel along these corridors and to give buses priority at intersections. Bus stop relocations near side to far side, that's from this side of the street to across the side of an intersection, to prevent our buses from being stuck at traffic lights and to improve access to the curb. Lastly, we're actively engaged at the state legislative level to help advance legisla legislation that prioritizes transit on our streets and highways. Former assembly member, now Attorney General Rob Bonta, introduced a bill that will improve transit service into and out of San Francisco by installing a transit only lane on the Bay Bridge. With 
Bonta's confirmation as state attorney general, Assemblymember Buffy Wicks has agreed to carry this bill. If passed into law, the bill will play an important first step in helping to improve the reliability of our trans-based service, which is frequently bogged down in traffic jams. Certainly true as we see traffic returning to our freeways. Through the Blue Ribbon Transit Recovery Task Force, AC Transit is working with other Bay Area transit agencies to coordinate service planning, operations, communications, and our response to the pandemic. Most importantly, we're hiring operators right now. Getting operators hired is the key to how fast we can restore service. Uh, if you are looking for work or you have friends or family looking for work, AC Transit slash careers, um, it's a great place to work, trust me. This includes improving regional connectivity, improving the customer experience, particularly as it relates to travel on multiple systems and focusing on equity to make sure the region's transit network is accessible and affordable to all. I'll conclude my remarks here and hand the mic back to Claudia Burgos to introduce the Q&A segment of Transit Talks. Again, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you, General Manager Hirsch, and thank you to all of the presenters. We recognize that that was a lot of information, but we thought it was important to share with you not only the ways in which we have been impacted by the pandemic and our response, but also to highlight the other key initiatives that we have been focused on throughout the year, all of which are aimed at improving service quality, reliability, and the rider experience. <clears throat> with that, we're now going to get ready to transition to the Q&A portion of the program. And we're going to start with the first question that came in on the Q&A box. And this one is going to be for Robert. Uh, this is somebody who's saying that he or she answered bike in one of the polls because the AC transit line, which serves their neighborhood, is still suspended. And this person is going back to work now. And the AC transit line has no ETA for when it will return. So for now, this person is giving up on AC transit. And then there's a sad face in the Q&A. So Robert, can you um, uh, reiterate sort of what you shared uh, earlier in terms of um, the timeline for restoration of service on these lines that are suspended? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so we're going to keep looking at these every single sign up. Um, as resources allow, we'll bring back um, um, whatever service uh, we can. Um, there, there are a couple of things in play here. One, we want to make sure that we bring back service where there's the most number of people that can use the service. Um, two, we want to make sure that we uh, prevent our pass-ups. Um, we, we, we think that pass-ups is a, is a temporary issue um, as, as the, the, the economy and, and the region reopens, um, but those are our two priorities. Um, but we're going to do that as resources allow, and we're going to keep going down the line, um, um, bringing back the routes um, that we know are, are more popular. Um, and this will all culminate in a new network in uh, August of 2022. Uh, where we'll look at everything. We'll look at uh, routes that are working well and need more service um, and routes that, that aren't working so great um, and can we do something different with those resources. Um, but that's the timeline is, is looking at um, uh, service increases along the way and then a new network in August of 2022. Thank you, Robert. This next question sort of builds on the first one, but this one's gonna be for Chris. Why can't AC Transit just bring back all the suspended lines now? Uh, thanks for the question, Claudia. I think that there's really two reasons is one, financially, we don't have the funding to uh, to be able to you know pay for all the the operators and all the service that we had initially. the uh, the emergency funding during the pandemic has allowed us to balance our budget, but only unfortunately at a lower service level. And then the second part of that is we have uh, lost uh, drivers who through retirements or you know other other sort of what they call natural attrition. So, we uh, don't have enough drivers right now to restore 100% service. Thank you, Chris. This next question is gonna to go to our general manager. Uh, let me scroll down. It has to do with masks. And, ooh, I'm not scrolling fast enough. I've lost it. Um, Buddy, I think I saw it pop up in the Q&A and it's if, if the question was are masks replaced when the dispensers are empty. The short answer is yes. Uh, I want to give a shout out to our 
a procurement team um, early on in this pandemic, the purchasing of PPE, both for our employees and for our customers was quite frankly, the Hunger Games. Um, our team did an incredible job with the assistance of the FTA. We've virtually had 100% stock inventory on PPE for both customers. We were one of the, and employees, we were one of the first agencies to deploy the, the masks for customers and the hand sanitizer on 100% of the fleet. The long answer to the question is if they run out while they're in service, they're to contact our control center. We will get a road supervisor to meet them at the end of the line on their layover or break and replenish those masks. At night, every single bus is fueled. Uh, the fare box is emptied. The buses are cleaned and mask and sanitizer is inventoried and, and restocked if necessary. Thank you, General Manager Hirsch. <clears throat> This next one is going to be for Robert. Um, uh, I know there's been transit studies and a proposal for light rail service on Broadway. Where are we with that? Yeah, great question. Um, I, I, I won't say that the, the, the project is, is not going to happen, um, but the studies definitely ran into um, um, a few hurdles that are, that are going to be difficult. Um, one is uh, going under um, 880, uh, when going to Jack London Square. And the second piece is looking at uh, what happens when you get to the Embarcadero uh, with the rail tracks there. Um, so those are two pieces of, of a light rail uh, or that a light rail um, option um, would be difficult uh, to address. Um, so right now the big focus is on, is on bus transit um, and making a, a bus transit a priority. Um, for those of you who have been on the corridor recently, you've seen that we put in, um, I believe as of last uh, fall, uh, we put in uh, dedicated transit lanes in partnership with the city of Oakland, um, a great project that uh, they, they initiated. And so we have dedicated transit lanes from uh, 20th all the way down to 11th. And then the goal is to continue those dedicated transit lanes uh, further south uh, to uh, Jack London Square. So that's, that's what we're looking at in the near term. And of course, all this is very gets very complicated when you start thinking about the potential for Howard Terminal and the new A Stadium down there. Thank you, Robert. <clears throat> this next question is for Nichelle. Uh, Nichelle, are there programs for lower fares for low income riders or those that have been financially impacted by COVID? Yes, thank you for the question. We actually, um, during in the middle of the pandemic, AC Transit was pleased to be able to join um, 19 other transit agencies in being a part of the Clipper Start program. The Clipper Start program is a discount program for folks who have um, low to very low incomes. Um, it gives a 20% discount on AC Transit for uh, off of adult cash single ride fares. Um, you get a, and you, there are just some simple qualifications. You have to be in the Bay Area. You have to be an adult between 19 and 64. Um, and you have a, a household income of 20% uh, of the federal poverty level or less. The really cool thing about this program and this pilot is, like I'd mentioned, there were another um, 19 or 20 agencies that are a part of this program. And once you are in the program, you receive a special Clipper card you will receive discounts with the Clipper Start program on every um, single transit agency who participate in the program. So I think it is a really valuable tool for those uh, of our riders and other folks in the community who would like to ride transit, but it might be uh, financially difficult for them to do so. Um, I encourage you to go to the clipperstartcard.com and uh, go ahead and, and download an application, fill it out. You can also call um, and if you do not have access to a uh, computer. So thank you. Thank you, Nichelle. <clears throat> Here's a question from somebody from the East Bay Transit Writers Union. I'm eager to get back on the bus and I'm disappointed that the plan suggests only minor increases to service other than school service until August, 2020. Can the district use ARPA funds to restore service faster than this? And how will we learn about the more short-term service restorations that were mentioned? This one is going to go to the general manager. Thanks, Claudia. And what a great question. And 
I see a lot of questions in the Q and A about what exactly is the timeline, and I would say we all share the frustration of our of our riders about how fast can we restore service. Let me take the ARPA question first. MTC is not scheduled to take action on the ARPA funds until July 28th, so I would encourage our viewers, riders, listeners to follow the MTC process. We don't know what our allocation will be. Certainly restoration of services are number one priority. Uh, for that to happen, we need to relax the social distancing on the buses, which we're scheduled to do in June. And as I mentioned earlier, we need to hire operators. Um, one of the reasons we are not in dire financial times is because we had operator vacancies going into COVID. We've continued to see operators attrit, retire, uh, move. Um, so we have a large number of operators that need to be hired. And all of the Bay Area transit agencies are trying to hire, op hire operators. So we're not sure how fast. We're looking at every way that we can speed up training, have more classes, uh, get the operators safely and confidently through training and restore service. What exactly that timeline will be depends on how fast we can get people hired and trained. And if people are out there to apply for these jobs, I can't stress enough, actransit.org slash careers. It's an incredible place to work, living wage with great benefits, um, giving back to the public, being a public service provider. Um, I think that answers the question. I understand the frustration from the community. Uh, follow MPC. As far as getting updates on our plans, go to actransit.org and sign up for our e-news. It's right on our front page. You can select uh, to get information about your line or to get information about our public meetings. Uh, follow our board meetings. We will continue these uh, public meetings, but also our board meets typically twice a month where we provide regular updates on how we're doing through the pandemic and how we're coming out of it. I hope that answers the question. Thank you, General Manager Hirsch. This next question is gonna go to Robert. Uh, this is from Daniel. Uh, first, he says, thanks for this presentation. Very informative. Thank you, Daniel. Are there any plans for any future tempo lines? Yeah, great question. For those of you uh, familiar with um, our tempo service, um, it's, it's one of the, the big shining lights in our service uh, during the pandemic. Um, it's, it's really exceeding um, expectations of what we expect to see on, on a bus route during the, uh, the pandemic. Um, and, and we think that uh, once we get into um, reopening, um, that that route will be uh, uh, truly successful. And, and I think we'll, we'll, we'll feel great about accomplishing uh, what we intended to do with the International Boulevard uh, Transit Service. So of course, the next question is going to be, where can we, um, where, where can we uh, look next for, for our next tempo line? Um, and I think there's two possibilities and we're working with the Alameda County Transportation Commission on those two possibilities. Um, one is um, an, an extension of uh, tempo further south um, so going through uh, city of San Leandro uh, down to the Bayfair BART station and then continuing even further south um, when you get towards the Mission Corridor. So that's a potential um, and is under study right now. Um, we'll, we'll go through alternatives and public outreach process to see if we can get to a preferred alternative and then determine what the next steps are if we can actually put that into planning and design. Um, the other potential option is uh, the San Pablo Corridor. That one's a little more complicated. There's lots of different jurisdictions uh, along San Pablo. Um, and in many places, the uh, right of way is more narrow than other corridors for being such a major transit corridor. But it is something that AC Transit is interested in exploring. And can we have uh, a BRT um, along that corridor? Um, there's, there's just lots of things to, to take into consideration. And um, once we have more analysis about how BRT would work and other alternatives would work along the corridor, then that one also is one that we hope we can move into um, further planning and design. And all of these proposals, um, while they're, they're great and they show promise, um, we do need to find the funding. Um, but I think the better we can align ourselves in terms of planning and design, the better that we're positioned to receive uh, large scale funding for a project, um, hopefully not too far in the, in the distant future. Thank you, Robert. This next question is going to be for our Director of Maintenance, Cecil Blandin, who there he is. Thank you, Cecil. As a regular rider using the bike racks, are any changes contemplated for bike for rack improvements and racks that handle three bikes on all buses? 
Good evening, everyone. Cecil Bennett, Director of Maintenance. Uh, yes, actually, uh, our current fleet um, has the three position bike rack. So, and actually, to say is all new buses have three position bike racks. So, um, expect to see more and more of the three position bike racks as we continue to replace the older fleet and introduce new fleet to the district. Thank you, Cecil. Uh, this next one is going to go to the general manager. What are the job qualifications for an AC transit operator? So the entire job specification, again, is posted at AC transit slash careers. But most importantly is previous bus, bus operator experience is not required. Obviously, we're looking for people to be punctual, um, to be professional. There are some minimum qualifications. You do need to be 21 years of age. You should have three years of driving with a regular license. We'll help you get your commercial license with a passenger endorsement. You can't have more than one moving violation in the past three years. No at-fault accidents in the past three years. No failure to appear or failure to pay in the last three years. And no driver's license suspension in the last three years. No reckless driving or DUI in the past seven years. Um, you should have correctable vision to 2040. Um, you should not have untreated diabetes health. Obviously, you have to be in good health to uh, one pass your medical screening. But uh, if you do have conditions, cardiovascular disease, uh, something that could be a risk for driving the bus, you will have to pass a medical screening. Um, again, we have a very comprehensive training program. It takes six to nine weeks to get through the, the, the minimums. We, you do have to take a DMV test that we're qualified to administer. The exact requirements for the job are posted under our, our careers page. And I would encourage people to take a look at that. It's, a, it's an incredible job if you like serving the public, uh, particularly during the pandemic, if you like providing truly life-saving. You know, we're, we're getting people to schools. One of the things that's great about working for AC Transit is, is this is a population that, that embraces AC Transit, that needs AC Transit, that needs public transit. We're helping the environment. We're helping people to get to school, to job interviews, to medical appointments. You can come to work and leave at the end of the day and be satisfied that you've made an impact in your community. It's why I love working here. And when I talk to operators and mechanics and the, the more than 2,300 employees that run AC Transit, the vast majority of them is giving back to the community that makes this such a satisfying job. We're hiring more than operators. Operators is our, is our, is our number one need right now, but there's plenty of careers. So I encourage people to check the website and check it frequently. It changes on a weekly basis. Thank you. I'm going to do one more question out of the Q&A box. This next one's going to be for Chris, our CFO. And then I'm going to go to the one person that has his or her hand up uh, that is uh, participating by phone. So Chris, this question is for you. I see that Fairbox recovery is only 15% of the AC Transit budget. What other factors during this pandemic have negatively impacted the AC Transit budget? Thanks, Claudia. So. I would say, you know, about 50% of our budget in normal times is composed of sales tax revenues of, of one sort or another. So the, you know, especially initial reduction in spending and sales tax revenues uh, were something that uh, greatly affected our budget. Uh, fortunately, the property and parcel taxes, which is a little bit more, maybe about 30% of our budget, that was uh, relatively stable during the pandemic, but it was, it was basically everything else. Uh, fare box, sales tax, and some of the other things, uh, bridge toll, and um, other operating revenues that we bring in that all went down during the pandemic. Um, they have come back. Uh, sales taxes have certainly come back, um, but unfortunately not all the way. And so we are still trying to uh, work our way back up to uh, a regular revenue base that can support the level of service that we all really want to provide. Thank you, Chris. Now I'm gonna ask Tammy to help me out. We have two callers with raised hands. So hey, the phone number ending in 9209, go ahead. Hi, I have a financial question. AC Transit does provide monthly passes locally to both adults and the senior disabled community. Why is it though 
that AC Transit only offers Trans Bay passes to adults and not to the senior disabled community. This is an imbalance. Is it because of financial reason or why? Thank you. So this, this is Chris Andrzejczak, the, the AC Transit CFO. Um, that is actually a very good question. Uh, I am not sure offhand why we do not offer a senior disabled Transbay pass. We'll certainly investigate and if possible, we'll offer it in the future. Okay, Tammy, can you unmute the next uh, caller uh, ending in 1797? Yes, go ahead. One seven nine seven. Go ahead and. Yes, the name's Charles Cameron. Uh, could I possibly ask the question? Uh, being that a Mr. Keith Lewis from uh, the City of San Leandro's uh, Planning Department. Uh, asked for this special meeting, uh, what their concerns or issues are uh, as of right now. Sorry, I don't this, know if I caught a question in there. Yeah, this is my curse, the general manager. I think that question would be for city, the city of San Leandro in their special meeting. I don't think it's something AC Transit can respond to. Okay, thank you. So we're going to go back to the Q&A box here. Um, there's a couple of questions that have to do with the 1T um, from Ms. Jackson. Ms. Jackson, thank you for your patience. Um, I'm going to, so this one here is on the 1T, overcrowding is a big problem. I ride daily and I can usually count the drivers on one hand who will enforce the limit restriction. Uh, General Manager Hirsch, do you want to take this one? Well, yeah, sure, happy to do so. Um, the first thing is obviously relaxing the social distancing. We're proud of how popular the line is, but we need to get the bus capacity back. Um, those are special buses, so we have a limited number of buses that can actually operate that service. Um, again, in June, we hope to relax the social distancing and, and later this year have no social distancing requirements. Thank you. Uh, this is also related to the line 1T. Um, this uh, a participant would like to see more customer service on the buses. Uh, normally rides 1T. Also, the drivers use the microphone more for inside the bus and for communicating at the bus stops on the outside. Um, Nichelle, can you talk a little bit about customer service and maybe also talk about the um, perhaps the platform agents that are out there um, supporting customers on the Tempo line? Sure, absolutely. You know, Tempo is a, is a very long line um, and, and we certainly have done a number of things to, to try to communicate both on the platforms and on the coaches themselves about uh, important things about the line, um, how to pay for your fare, how to ride and use tempo. There's also signage, um, electronic signage that gives stop information. There's uh, line maps inside the buses that give stop information. So we, we try to really um, communicate in a variety of different ways to our riders, but uh, sometimes that's, that's not always enough. So we also have um, platform agents, tempo platform agents, whose responsibility it is to do just that, to be the on the street um, ambassadors of the line. You'll see them, they're outfitted in very distinctive tempo jackets, and they're definitely uh, there to, to ask questions of, and they also provide feedback to us in marketing, communications, transportation, and operations to help make the line better. So I definitely encourage you, if, if you um, have suggestions on how we can communicate better, have even more effective customer service, we encourage you to reach out, call our customer service line or go online and send us um, uh, a, 
a, some information so that, so that we can take a look. And, and our goal is always to be as transparent as possible with our riders and make sure you have the information you ha need to ride successfully, the 1T in all of our lines. Thank you, Nichelle. This next question is gonna be for Chris. This one's regarding uh, the Biden infrastructure proposal, which could give AC Transit a, a similar, I'm reading, I'm reading the question here, could give AC Transit a similar amount to Carissa or ARPA or more, but only to spend on infrastructure. Does AC Transit have enough projects in concept that they could actually use that much funding for? Uh, thanks, Claudia. Uh, we certainly do. AC Transit has a, you know, like many other public transit agencies, uh, has a, a pretty good backlog of, of unaddressed capital needs. Uh, we've had, you know, pretty good success uh, on some levels of getting funding for some of our capital projects, but we have a uh, recently, maybe a couple years ago, completed master plan for renewal of all of our operating facilities that has a, a very large price tag uh, to do everything. Uh, but certainly that's probably our biggest uh, unaddressed area is the um, you know, state of good repair or maintenance uh, overhaul of our facilities, which are all about 40 years old or, or older at this point. And then certainly the, uh, as the general manager mentioned, that we have a, a mandate to switch to 100% zero emission buses by 2040. Uh, that is not just buying new buses, that is installing the charging and uh, hydrogen fueling infrastructure that we don't have currently to keep these buses uh, charged up and ready to go. So we, we certainly have a, a large slate of capital projects that we could spend capital funding on over the next uh, many years if, if it were available. And I, I just like to jump back quickly to the question before about uh, Transbay passes. So we, we uh, the caller's right, we don't have a Transbay senior disabled pass. Um, I, I, I don't know the specific why I'm going to I'm going to guess that it's because there's just not a huge demand for it, um, but we do uh, we do offer the local pass, and for senior disabled riders, we offer a discounted uh, fare upgrade to Transbay. So using those two, you would essentially have the the makings of a discounted Transbay pass. Uh, sorry, it's not as convenient as just a regular senior disabled Transbay pass, but even just having another pass product is work for for many people and. So we need to see enough demand to be able to carry that pass on our books. If, if I could add to the infrastructure question, um, first off, I would encourage everybody on the call, as well as your friends and family, lobby your local elected officials, particularly at the federal level. We need to be included in that infrastructure plan. Uh, Mr. Andrzejczyk did a good job of talking about our needs. Our needs are $2.1 billion for our facilities. And what the public may not be aware of is pre-COVID. And, and we say pre-COVID, whether we're back to, to pre-COVID in six months or 18 months, we will get back to that. We were literally limited. We have no more capacity for additional buses. Uh, again, a fleet of over 550 buses, 543 right now. We There's no place else to add buses. So we desperately need another facility um, we need our infrastructure. We need public transit infrastructure to be recognized. It's been neglected for a very long time. Um, help us lobby to the extent that you can, and please help us put public transit at the top of the list for infrastructure needs. Yes, freeways need to be repaired, but we need to get out of automobiles and onto public transit, and for that, we need infrastructure dollars. Thank you both for your responses to that question. Uh, there's two or three questions in the Q&A regarding the pilots that Robert mentioned earlier. One of us, one of them is from our colleague over at Transform. Thanks, Jamario, for being here. Please explain or give examples regarding the pilots you are considering to bring back bus service. Sure, great question. Um, and this is also tied to, I think I saw another comment about minor service changes. Um, so, so AC Transit, when we make a service change, um, we're required to have a public hearing uh, seek board approval, and then also have um, what we call a service equity analysis to make sure that whatever service we're putting in is equitable. Um, but there are exceptions to that policy, and this is all driven by the Federal Transit Administration. So we are a federal funding uh, uh, recipient uh, for many of our infrastructure and, and buses, um, so we have to follow FTA guidelines, and that's what they call for. But there are exceptions to that rule, and one is pilots. Um, pilots allow us to try something for 12 months 
um, and then we can see whether or not it works. Um, and then what we hope to do with the pilot set that um, I'm talking about in this situation is see if we want to make them permanent as part of the 2022 network change. So some of the pilots that we have in mind right now are um, serving uh, Seaplane Lagoon in the city of Alameda. Um, that service uh, from, the, from the ferry perspective is going to start uh, soon in, in August, September timeline. And so we want to see if we can bring some service out there to the west end of the island uh, to meet that. Um, we talked about and, and also heard from the customers about the lack of service along the Ashby Corridor and Line 80, which is a route that remains suspended. Um, one thing with that route is that pre-pandemic, it wasn't a very productive route. So there weren't a whole lot of riders. So we're trying to figure out what can we do with serving the Ashby Corridor to make it more productive and more popular. And we're thinking maybe instead of going north towards, uh, towards El Cerrito um, and West Berkeley, why don't we try going south towards Emeryville where there's just lots more to, 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 to uh, travel to um, in, in that area, whether it's shopping, jobs, uh, retail, housing, um, all sorts of different activities, um, which has seemed to be popular for other routes where we've anchored them with, a, with an Emeryville destination. Uh, the third pilot we're looking at is um, um, Chabot College and connecting that to the South, South Hayward BART station. This has been uh, something that was a, a, a concern of, of riders and uh, students at Chabot College uh, when we implemented our service changes back in 2017. So trying to look at that also. So these pilots give us a little bit of flexibility to try these things without going through the service equity analysis and the public hearing and deferring those until we want to make those uh, permanent. The one last thing I want to add to that is re returning suspended routes. So whether it's Transbay, school routes, some of the routes that we brought back, um, th those are also uh, exemptions and not considered major service changes. So we can bring back um, some routes exactly as they were pre-pandemic um, without, without going through a significant uh, planning and outreach process. Thank you, Robert. This next question is going to be for Nichelle. Uh, we haven't forgotten about you, Nichelle. We just haven't okay. gotten uh, haven't gotten a lot of questions for you. Can okay. I tap my phone to pay my fare? Do I have to carry a clipper card or cash to ride the bus? That's actually a great question um, because we've spent a lot of time during this pandemic time um, looking at more effective ways of ensuring contactless payment for our riders. So we have a couple of things that have just recently uh, come on the market. One is, yes, um, you can use your phone to pay your fare. We, um, back at the end of, of 2020, we launched on our AC Transit official app, a mobile fare payment platform. We currently allow um, adult riders to pay for um, uh, single rides, uh, day pass or seven day. Soon you'll see some new upgrades to that with an expanded audience base and, um, and also some really new features that I think will be really interesting to our writers. And two weeks ago, our partners um, at Clipper, the regional fare payment instrument, launched uh, a pay a virtual card on your phone for Apple Pay. So you could use your Clipper card on your phone or mobile device and you tag your car, your phone on the uh, Clipper reader and board. So that's great. We expect it soon for Android uh, coming really soon. So we'll have two ways um, to use your mobile devices to pay. One is through the um, mobile payment platform that we currently have out in market. And then the other is with our Clipper partners. So I think it's a very exciting time for folks who really like to use mobile devices like me. I, I have like 400 apps on my phone. I love apps. So I'm really excited to be able to get to use these uh, devices out in the market. And um, please, again, tell us what you think. Um, let us know. We're, we're always looking for feedback. So uh, tap away. Thank you, Nichelle. This next one, we're going to bring our Director of Maintenance, Cecil Blandin, back, back up to the panel. Thank you, Cecil. And this one reads, some of the windows are broken on buses, which affects the air system. Can you talk about what that means and what we do? Sure, so, and, and I think what the, the, the question actually referring to when it's saying broken windows, I think it's probably referring to the windows being closed or locked in place. Uh, I think that's what they're referring to because 
Uh, there should be no uh, broken windows when a, a vehicle is in service. That would be an out of service criteria for the district and, our, and would be against our standard that we have. So, so but I want to address the ventilation, which, which I want to, I think that's what the, um, you know, our customer here is stating. So the vehicles, the windows were closed um, after a series of tests conducted with the airflow. Uh, what we've done is we've created positive ventilation inside the bus. And by doing that, uh, how do we uh, achieve this is, you know, the air condition, the HVAC is on, um, the windows close and the rear roof hatch is in the upright position, fully opened up. This creates positive ventilation, which creates an airflow to, uh, to extract all the particulates uh, from inside the bus and out through the rear hatch. This is uh, the best method to keep everyone inside the bus uh, safe during the pandemic. Thank you, Cecil. All right, this next one is gonna go back to Robert. <clears throat> when will AC Transit unveil its first, whoo, just lost the question, another one just came in. It's first quick build project, I think is what it read. Yeah, and um, thanks uh, uh, Derek for uh, giving that question and advocating for quick build. Um, and I also just wanted to say, um, it's great to hear from advocates and those that are interested in AC Transit, whom we may not have seen over the past year. So it's great to see you guys participating in this meeting and, and providing feedback and questions. Uh, but with regards to quick build, um, there's there's two potential projects that are, are quick build that we uh, submitted to ACTC CIP uh, for funding. We haven't gotten word back yet um, on if those will uh, get funded, but we feel confident uh, that they are. Um, the two projects are looking at uh, MacArthur um, and Park um, in front of Oakland High School and trying to sort through the, the tangle that's there. Um, which uh, many of you are familiar with. And then the, the second is uh, Durant um, in Berkeley and looking at um, improving the dedicated transit lane couplet. There's one existing on Bancroft. I think the Durant one um, as a concept is probably, uh, there's probably further consensus uh, with city of Berkeley staff. Also there's additional funding that uh, Berkeley uh, is willing to plug into that project as uh, from its TNC tax. So if I were to, to guess, um, and really it's a guess at this point, I think the, um, the Berkeley project might be a little bit further along in development, um, but we'll know a lot more in probably the coming month uh, once we get funding um, word um, on these two projects and which one can proceed. Thank you, Robert. You should keep your, your mic on because this next one is for you as well. The change in the way we work has meant that more services will be needed in homes instead of central locations. This is likely to be permanent. Are you planning for this? We're, we're trying the best we can. I think that's where these uh, transit talks um, and the polling questions uh, start to come into consideration. Um, we're going to take a deeper dive into outreach and understanding uh, rider needs um, in the fall, as I mentioned in our outreach um, um, timeline. Um, and, and really get a gauge of, of what the needs are of our riders. And is it commuting to San Francisco? Is it making essential trips? The one thing I will point out in all of this is that yes, there are services that need to be centralized around the home. I think we're all seeing that. However, there's a lot of people out there and there's a lot of people in cars that we can, convince, uh, we can try to convert with good service to ride transit. And then there's always people that have no other means to, to get around still have to go to a doctor's appointment, still have to go to the market, still have to go to essential jobs. And um, we're going to serve them, uh, serve those, um, those folks. So I think there is enough of demand out there, um, but we do wanna keep track of what is happening uh, with uh, work from home essentially, uh, to see how our new services are going to, to play themselves out. And I think particularly with the commute-based services. Thank you, Robert. Here's one that just came in. <clears throat> this one's gonna go to our general manager. The CDC has recently concluded that not only is surface COVID transmission an extremely low risk, current quote deep cleaning methods using disinfectant are not doing more than normal cleaning agents like soap would. Is AC Transit looking to align its cleaning with this new scientific guidance, which might create savings? Yes, we are. I will say that, um, first off, we have an entire safety team that's following CDC as well as state and local guidance. I will be candid and tell you it's been frustrating to try to keep up and, and get the sources aligned, but we are trying to follow the latest scientific guidance 
and we agree it does appear that the CDC is relaxing their cleaning. With that said, they, they just extended the mask mandate uh, for obviously employees and passengers in September. So our intention, as we have through the entire pandemic, is to follow CDC and local guidance, including Cal OSHA, who's uh, oftentimes been stricter about this particular aspect uh, through the pandemic and, and as we come out of it. Um, we also know that the public in various surveys has said they don't feel safe riding public transit. One, it is absolutely safe, you should not fear it, but we still want to have the protocols in place that give the public the most confidence to return to public transit. Yes, we do tend to scale down, we do intend to scale down as the CDC and Cal OSHA permits. Thank you, General Manager Hirsch. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Stephen Jones and Chantel Reynolds um, if there are any questions. Um, I've been keeping tabs with them via text, and there weren't any questions on the Spanish or Chinese phone lines earlier. But before we um, we're getting close to 7:30 here, uh, before we close things out, I want to check one more time, uh, Chantel. Um, are there any questions from folks on the Spanish line? Uh, good evening. We have no questions from the Spanish interpretation line. Thank you. Thank you, Chantel. And Stephen? Hi, there are no questions from the Chinese interpretation line tonight. Okay, thank you both. So we are down to the last four minutes. I wanna um, leave some time for President Ortiz and Director Walsh to share some closing remarks if you would like before I um, close things out with just final ways that folks can stay in touch with us. So it looks like President Ortiz has unmuted. Um, go ahead. <laughs> thank you, Claudia. Uh, and thank you to everybody who participated in transit talks. They are very important for the board and staff and general manager to hear from you, the writers about what is concerning you, what you see as the future, what you would like to see as the future of AC Transit. Um, so please, thank you again. And um, I don't know if Jean would like to say something. Yes, thank you, uh, uh, President Ortiz. I wanna thank the staff and general manager for this wonderful presentation. And thanks for everyone for coming out tonight and giving us your thoughts and your questions and, and giving us your time tonight. And this is not your only opportunity. We do have regular board meetings. Please come. And if you can't make it, you can always email the board. Uh, we do want your input. So thank you for coming tonight. And please keep the input coming because we're going to need it as we plan a new network and get through this pandemic. We want to hear how transit is affecting your life and how it could be improved. So, so thank you for coming and, and keep participating and engaging with us. Thank you. Thank you, Director Walsh and President Ortiz. I also want to recognize that still with us, um, I did not recognize you in the beginning and my apologies for that. Director Robert Rayburn from BART has attended um, all three of our transit talks meetings thus far. So thank you, Director Rayburn uh, for your partnership and of course the collaboration between AC Transit and BART. And so with that, we'll put up Claudia, one Claudia, last- Claudia, yes. I don't know if you recognize Director Chris Peoples who was on the phone. Yes, my apologies, Director Chris Peoples, who is also here and has actively participated in the last two Transit Talks meetings um, today because we already had two directors participating actively. Um, Director Peoples is, is uh, tuning in and um, listening and making note of the comments and questions that have come in this evening as well. Um, if Christine, if you could throw up the last slide uh, to let people know, thank you how you can stay engaged in this effort, as Director Walsh mentioned. So we have a web page that has been created on the AC Transit website backslash talks. We have an email, talks at actransit.org, and we have three dedicated phone lines where you could leave your feedback in English, Chinese, or Spanish. And of course, you can also send us your comments in writing to the AC Transit headquarters at 1600 Franklin. And then the one last thing, we have been joined also by Jess Bartholomew of Senator Skinner's office. Uh, thank you for joining us. And with that, we are um, one minute from 7.30. We promised we would start on time and we would end on time. So thank you all for joining uh, Transit Talks and have a good evening. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>